We are called to worship today by Psalm 150. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty firmament. Praise him for his mighty deeds. Praise him according to his, his surpassing greatness. Praise him with the trumpet. Praise him with the lute and harp. Praise him with the tambourine and with dance. Praise him with strings and pipe. Praise him with cymbals and loud clashing cymbals. Let everything that breathes praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'd like to welcome you to online worship at the Moravian Church. Uh, a reminder that to find most of our announcements or important updates, uh, there's a congregational email that comes out on Friday and ask that you please pay close attention to that. Uh, I also do encourage everyone to share with others uh, that they can find worship with us on our Moravian Church website. A reminder, uh, more and more of you are finding that you need masks, and this is a great place to come and get them. So please let us know, and we will provide for that need. And I'd also like to let you know that don't feel a need that you need to try to pay for the masks that we provide you. Um, these are an offering of love given to you by those who make them so that you will be safe and healthy. Uh, next week there will be a special video honoring our high school graduates who have responded to our request for information and that they be celebrated. So uh, we ask you to look for that as it will be a very special celebration. And finally, it is Memorial Day weekend and we don't have uh, many of the normal ways that we would celebrate and remember on this weekend. So this is what I ask of you. I would ask that you take some time sometime this weekend that you stop what you're doing, that you join hands with the people who are in your bubble, and that you bow your heads and that you give thanks, and you remember those we've lost, those who've sacrificed so that we might be a nation with freedom, to be reminded that it involves sacrifice for us to be united and to get through challenging times together. So though we may not have the parades and all of the other things, you can honor those sacrifices. Our scripture reading today is from the book of Acts, chapter 1, verses 6 through 9. This is during the time that Jesus, after his resurrection, uh, walked the earth and gathered his disciples and the apostles and ate with them and taught them and talked with them. Begin at verse 6. 
So when they met together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before the their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. Emily Dickinson was a great American poet. She was raised in a somewhat well-to-do family uh, in New England. She received a good education as a young girl at Amherst and later at Holyoke. As she grew older, she, though, she became more and more of a recluse, rarely leaving her hometown eventually rarely even leaving her bedroom. Very few of her poems were published in the middle of the 19th century when she wrote them, uh, maybe about 10 or so, and, and those that were published were heavily edited because her, her writing didn't conform to the style of the day, so the publishers edited them before they, they put them out for sale. We don't know a lot about her life and her relationships and thoughts because she made her sister promise that she, upon her death, she would destroy all her papers, all her correspondence, all her notebooks, and uh, unfortunately her sister kept that promise. We do know, though, that Emily was a Christian and many of her poems explore Christian themes and some are, are explicitly about Jesus. We also know that she often had bouts of depression, maybe, maybe not clinical depression like we think of it today, but certainly she had her times of sadness and loneliness. Her family found binders full of poems in her room after she died at age 55. They found about 2,000. Eventually, many of these made it into print, and at first, uh, because she was a writer so far ahead of her time, many, many of the poems that were published were, once again, were edited so that they would conform to what people thought was the style of the day. It was about 1955 when modern poetry kind of caught up with her, and that and her, finally, her complete works, unedited, were published in 1955. She is considered to be among the top tier of American poets maybe even the very best. And depending on which critics you read, she may be one of the best writers in English of all time. There's almost no high school or college today that, that doesn't expose its students to some of her writing at least. Now I give you all this background because I want to share one of her poems. Her poems are generally short and they use very familiar rhyme and rhythm. In fact, I'm told that you can sing almost all of them to the tune of Amazing Grace. I haven't tried it. Even so, sometimes they are difficult to understand, particularly if someone's reading them to you and you can't go back and reread lines. So you're going to have to listen carefully. This poem is about hope. Hope is a thing with feathers that perches in the soul and sings the tune without words and never stops at all and sweetest in the gale is heard. And sore must be the storm that could abash the little bird that kept so many warm. I've heard it in the chilled land and on the strangest sea, yet never an extremity had asked a crumb of me. Now I love poetry, but I'm not under any illusions about my ability to interpret poems. Uh, but in this case, I'm gonna offer at least on the broadest level, what I think this means. Hope is a thing that carries us through rough times. Hope is always available and is without limit. And most critically, hope is free. The Apostle Paul tells us that the three pillars of Christianity are faith, hope, and love. He calls love the greatest of these because love is eternal. But love is not free. Love demands action, and it often demands sacrifice. Jesus himself taught that the greatest love is to give your life for another. Faith requires belief 
and sometimes that can be a challenge. Hope, however, has no such prerequisites. Hope is at the very heart of the gospel, and it is freely given by a benevolent God. In our scripture reading today from the very beginning of the book of Acts, the resurrected Jesus is giving his final farewell instructions to the apostles. He's been with them and with his other followers for 40 days since he rose from the dead. He's been teaching and comforting them in this perilous and difficult time. And they needed reassuring because they were in real danger. Most of them, in fact, would die as martyrs, some sooner rather than later. But Jesus told them not to leave Jerusalem until they had been visited by the Holy Spirit. And then he told them that they would be his witnesses, his witnesses to all people everywhere. What is it that they were to witness? Surely they were supposed to continue his teachings about ethics and morals and love. And surely they were supposed to tell about the things they had seen and heard about his life and his death and resurrection. Their faith, their belief had grown quite a bit since Easter morning. They had seen the risen Lord. They had walked with him and they had talked with him and they were witnesses. Perhaps the most special part of this witness was about hope. And perhaps it is hope that is the most special thing that we Christians have to offer today. Since the beginning of time, human beings have wondered about life. It's their awareness of life's boundaries that makes them wonder. We are all destined sooner or later to die. So given that fact, does what we do with our lives really matter? Does life have any meaning beyond our understanding of biology? Are we more than just a collection of cells? The resurrection of Jesus is what gave life meaning for the apostles, and it's what gives life meaning today. Because of Jesus, we have hope that life is not meaningless. We have hope that we can live in the kingdom of God, both now and forever, because God has revealed himself to us as Jesus Christ. We know our God is a loving God and that our life and the lives of those around us and indeed the lives of all humanity down to the very least of these is important. It's important to the one who made us and who will grant us eternal life. Surely we Christians do not look forward to death and surely we don't recklessly court danger. We need to be responsible with this gift of life. Today, that means to stay safe, to keep social distancing, to wear a mask, to wash your hands. But just as surely we should not fear death, that's the meaning of Easter. Jesus has conquered death. This is a time when we need hope more than ever. We are called to be Christ's witnesses in this world at this time in these circumstances. And as witnesses, we need to maintain our faith in a challenging time. We need to love one another, and that will require some sacrifice. Most especially, we need to share hope. Hope is free. Hope will keep many warm. And hope purchase in the soul. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious and righteous God, we thank you for making your will known to us through your Son, our Lord and living Savior, Jesus Christ, and through the gift of the Holy Spirit. Help us to know and understand your good pleasure for us. Keep our hearts open to your leading. Help us to do ministry, to be servants just as Jesus was a servant, and to do good works so that evil, suffering, and persecution may end. Strengthen our faith. Let us love one another. Be with those in our community and nation who are suffering. Bring healing and peace. Help us all to turn away from anger and distress. Bring a spirit of cooperation upon our land. We ask that we may be your witnesses and that we may bring hope to others in this most difficult time. In Jesus' name, amen. 
The God who said, let the light shine in the darkness, shine in your hearts and reflect from you the face of Jesus. Amen. Thank you.